Namaste Galactic family. Welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. Welcome if you are new and thank you for your continued love and support of my channel. Don't forget to go ahead and hit the notifications bell so you can continue to stay updated with my current messages. Now today I do have my Halls of Amenti Planetary Interface Gate Map and Tandem Grid Keys. And this is according to the Halls of Amenti Planetary Sites. Um, which does include all of the 12 Q sites, all of the 12 Stargate grid locations, all of the 12 parallel Earth sites and gate sites, the inner Earth vertical tonal lines. It has all of the Trinity hub sites, all of the Trinity Stargates. It has all of the uh, seven Jehovian seals, all of the Michael and Mary turnstiles. This is an incredible map. If you are a dedicated grid keeper and gatekeeper, and you would like to see where um, these locations have been notated as far as galactic human history, um, if you are somebody who jumps on ascensionglossary.com and is constantly researching um, ascension intelligences, um, this map coincides all of that information and um, was created by Ashayana Dean, who is essentially the mother who has channeled human galactic history. Well, she hasn't really channeled it. She is a commission speaker for the Melchizedek Cloister Order, but this is essentially the map that she has created, and I absolutely love this map. I vouch for this map 100%. Um, everything, all of my work up until this point, um, I have referenced this map, and um, everything resonates very deeply inside. Now, does this map have everything on it as far as grid sites, planetary chakras? It doesn't have everything. I've had to add a lot of things to the map um, just to keep up with some of my perceptions and some of my downloads from the Stargate um, sites and, and the signets and things of that nature, but it definitely um, has the majority of what you need to fully understand the Stargate grid alignments. Okay, so this is why I usually put this map out for all of my energy updates is it's an amazing reference point um, to do this work. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys. And um, I have left a lot of links in the past to where you can get this map. It's only $12, um, but I will leave a link in the description for this video. So if you're looking for this map, you can get one. Okay guys, so today I have a galactic energy update for you regarding the planetary grids and possible probable outcomes at this point at the end of November and into December 2019 according to Stargate locations and also according to this pattern recognition that I have come to take note of within the planetary angular ley line activations since August. So on August 11th, 2019, I put out an Arcturian Stargate grid activation according to the Universal Stargate Templar. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a link above for that video. So if you wanna reference it to see what I'm talking about. Um, yes, I will do that. But essentially what I wanna show you is Okay, so this is going to be the Stargate Templars. So essentially when I'm talking about the Stargate Templars, that would be the six major founder races in accordance to the Stargate grid locations on the planet. And this isn't the best chart, but I can't find my really good one at this point. If you want to look at this chart, this is on page 524 in the Voyagers. But essentially... Um, this does align all of the Stargate grid locations on the biological and the planetary Cathara system. And then this picture in particular is the interface system to the Templar Q sites on Earth. So this is showing the synergistic relationship from the 12 Stargate signet sites on Earth in accordance to the 12 Templar Q sites. So these are um, in like a communication 
essentially as far as energetic impulse and ley line connection um, from the Stargate signets to the actual planetary Q site. So these are two different locations, but this one on the right is the one that I have primarily went upon for my Stargate energy updates and grid, and grid energy updates. Um, so this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Stargate Templars, um, just so you guys know. This one is actually the 24 Nibirian Crystal Temple bases. Um, so all of these locations, all of the Stargate grid locations on the planet are bunkered down and anchored next to a Nibirian Crystal Temple base camp. And this was part of the Luciferian Rebellion. And this is all through those selenite base crystal pylon rods that were actually spliced into the Earth's natural crystal cavern network that run between the Stargates and the Q sites. So whether that is their way of hijacking the systems, I mean, I feel like that's what it is. Um, but this does have to do with the fallen angelic and the Necromaton and the Anunnaki and the legions that hold on to the unnatural reverse matrix, the phantom matrix of Earth. But that's not what my energy update is about today. Um, I just wanted to give you an example of what I mean when I'm going by the uh, Stargate Templars. So um, each of those sites are in accordance to a location on the planet. So that's what that's what these are in accordance to the density as well. So this is how Stargate signets are in correlation to the density bodies on the planet. Um, it is through the base radial manifestation template, which is the core Cathara system, which is the base radial template level one of the light body. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to show you that really quick. And if you want to see that page 524 in the Voyager's book, but in this video today, um, I want to bring attention and discuss the feminine angular horizontal ley line that runs through the North and South Americas. Okay, so in my video on August 11th, 2019, the one I just left the link for, essentially I had taken note that that ley line, which I do feel that it's a combination between two ley lines, that, that they may simultaneously merge into one over here, but it is this section that goes basically through Australia. Um, there's two ley lines that uh, Ulu, Uluru's Rock and Ayers Rock, or Uluru Ayers Rock, resides in between these two ley lines. Now, I do feel the most important ley line is going to be this one that intersects over here in Australia, um, all intersecting angular horizontal ley lines do create that inner earth Q site access point. But essentially this ley line comes up and then wraps around in accordance on the other side of the planet and comes back through the South Americas. And this was the ley line that I was talking about on August 11th, okay? And so, this Stargate grid location and according to the Universal Templar is going to be uh, Lake Titicaca, Peru. Um, this is the Arcturian Stargate Signet and then also Machu Picchu, which is the Pleiadian um, Stargate grid location. Okay, so they all run on this uh, angular horizontal ley line, which is the most important ley line on the planet because this does run through both the North and South Americas and like I said comes back around, comes through Asia and through Australia and ultimately into the ring of fire, right? In that video I had went into the interconnections of the serpent temples and I believe that it was also the alignments to Hydra at that time had been activating that because um, when all of that kind of came up within a week the Brazil fires had broken out to peak damage, so to speak. So I put that video out and then a week later, all of the fires broke out. Okay. So this particular ley line, um, is, it's just, it truly is our most important ley line on the planet. Um, because it runs through Australia and it runs through New Zealand. And Australia is so important because not that there aren't other 
Mother Ark sites, which would be considered Covenant Stargate sites. There are other ones, but this is the most important one. I do feel due to its location in accordance to the Pacific Ocean, there's a lot more to that that I am going to start getting into um, in some later videos I'm going to do. But it is considered the most important feminine ley line and all angular tilt horizontal ley lines are the intersecting access points to the inner earth Q sites because, because they actually are coherent to the planetary pole tilt of 23.5 degrees. So they actually will represent the accesses between the density bodies. Like here on the Cathara, so this is a Cathara I have. Um, I'm gonna draw something on here for you guys. But you can see that these angular horizontal lines are going to represent the separation of the curve of the convergence between the densities. So what this actually looks like, and I don't have, I was looking for another picture to show you guys, but what I mean by that is there is actually um, in the more scientifically studied versions of the Cathara in accordance to the actual measurements of energetic structures in the actual geometrics of the formations of the morphogenetic field. Okay, there's actually, um, the uh, horizontal, angular horizontal ley lines actually run through like this. Okay, and this is what I mean by this. So each one of these lines would be a representative of those angular horizontal feminine ley lines, and these actually represent the density bodies of matter. Okay, so this would be density one. Sorry, my writing's not very good because I'm kind of turned. Density one, density two, density three, density four, and density five. Okay, so these are actually considered a signet. So this, or this is considered a hova body. Um, and these actually represent the horizontal expansion within the morphogenetic field or the bioenergetic field of the living being. And um, so within each signet, there are um, three dimensional fields within each one of the density bodies of the materialization of the matter. Okay, so, so these are equal and representative to the actual ley line on the planet. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, because, because this cathara is the actual morphogenetic template of every living energetic system. It is level one of the light body. Okay, so what I mean by that is this is the planetary biofeed interface system. Okay, so it is the base radial template to the human. It is the base radial template to the earth. And these two cathartic systems do link at the earth's core and they create the planetary biofeed interface system. This is the organic connection between personal and planet, planetary templar complexes. So, you know, everything biologically um, is designed to link planetarily. That's why you can access the DNA encoding to, you know, bilocate and have you know, planetary prophetic vision of areas on the planet all the way across another country. You know, it's this is how this is all interconnected. It's all interwoven um, through the Cathara grids. So that means the horizontal ley lines are also level one of the planetary system. That means that we should listen to them. That means that when stuff's going down on the planet, like these are our messengers. And um, it's as close as we're going to get from a surface level to perceiving the inner body level of the planet because they link and merge at the intersection, right? 
um, you can see that this is like a double over here. There's two red lines. It's a double one. Um, so this is a very, very powerful one here. This goes through the ring of fire, and that's probably why it's the only double on the planet. These ones are very close to being double, but they're not quite like the one that goes through Kauai, Hawaii, and Easter Island. And you see how they intersect at, at Easter Island, they intersect at Kauai, Hawaii. That's because that's an inner, or, inner Earth gate site. Same for Australia here. So I want to mark this one because that's going to be really important today. That's what we're going to talk about. So they're really important to perceiving the inner body level of the planet, the true inner access points to the inner earth races, the interplanetary auric levels, the etheric levels, and the particle and antiparticle transduction, the materialization, the dematerialization within the planetary realms. And really just overall the energetic health of the planet's core body. Now on November 5th, I put out the update of the ancient equatorial codes. So I'll leave a link above that the prehistorical equator codes had been awakening, connecting um, Easter Islands, the Nazca Lines, which are about right here, and then also Anger Watts, which is here. So if you caught that video, I had my <laughs> insufficient protractor trying to show that uh, previous equatorial line, which is not on this map. Um, but essentially, uh, the old, the prehistorical equatorial codes had been awakening and connecting energy from Easter Islands, the Nazca Lines, and Anger Wat. I call this the Lemurian Equator. Okay, and it's connecting and it's converging timelines when this is activated and awakened. Um, and this is signifying that we have merged timelines with Mu. And the memory encoding to these dormant signets on and in the planet. Basically saying that we are reliving Lemuria in an accelerated sense. Um, and these are all impulses that we're receiving from the ring of fire. These are all impulses that we are receiving primarily from um, some of the oldest ancient records of human existence, which is going to be in this area down here, which I know people are going to argue with me on this, um, but I'm just going to provide information and theory, I guess, and you can take it for what it is. And if it makes sense to you, integrate that. If it doesn't, then, you know, then don't. So uh, you, you, we may have, you may have felt that we are reliving Atlantis for so long, right? You know, so many people feel that we are just reliving the cataclysm over and over. But more dormant portions are awakening in the planet shields and are pushing through this Lemuria awakening, okay, which is coming through fire, 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 fire. <laughs> um, several connections being made to Hawaii recently and um, the Polynesian Triangle, which is never on a map unless you have a globe, unless you have an actual 3D perception of that, which I do need to get on board with Google Maps at some point. I'm realizing this, um, but I'm just, I guess I'm an old fashioned girl. I like my maps. I'm a map connoisseur. I have lots of maps. I, I actually have a historical map that is like 14 feet long and it picks up all of my living room. I don't get that map out very often, but um, basically the Polynesian Triangle is going to be over here. So it cuts off because, you know, it's interesting. I, I really do feel that our maps should make the Polynesian Triangle the center of the map and then everything else should be around that because that truly is like the face of Gaia. All of those volcanoes are like her pimples, you know what I mean, or something of that nature, but it's kind of like this is like her face. It's her face and it's her vagina. 
you know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna explain that more in some other videos, but it's the birthplace. It's where she births landmass and where she births incoming seeding races and where she births um, resurrection and clearing and healing and all of these things. It's all coming from that Polynesian triangle. Okay, so it's over here on this side, but essentially um, several connections are being made to Hawaii, the Polynesian Triangle, and the Laniakea Supercluster that I'm going to talk more about in the next video I post. So please stay tuned because these connections are incredible. And there's a huge connection to the Laniakea Supercluster right here in the Polynesian Triangle. Okay, so overall, you may feel that biological cellular memory is reactivating mergers prior to 798,000 BC, as this is the date that is predating the Lemurian Holocaust, bringing memory forth from some of the first human seedings. So you may be having visions of the Orphan Angels right now within fourth density. I actually talked with a girl who said she had seen the Orophim and they had a thousand eyes on their wings, which resonated so deeply inside of me. The Orophim angelic ascendancy being deeply connected to the creation of the Pleiades because the Pleiadians were created from the angelic ascendancy. And the entire Tyrannosian soul family, for that matter, the Terran incarnates, the Alcyon incarnates, this means many are sporadically awakening to the 24 to 48 strands of DNA. For some, this is completely bypassing the 12 strand DNA awakening and just expanding consciousness to the full ascension totality. So energy is very heightened at this time on the planet and as high as it can really possibly get in accordance to the radial, nuclear, and gamma quantum. So suddenly activating this and having your radial body go haywire as you adjust to the nuclear gamma light codes in your system, this can invoke an immensity of ascension symptoms, okay? And one of the major symptoms is you may be feeling like you've lost chunks of time or your time perception is just severely distorted. Maybe not even remembering weeks at a time or being able to recall what you did yesterday. Um, feeling like the days are also speeding up but then slowing down. It's like this, um, you, you're having severe time disorientation, okay? Because of the, the gamma, because of the activation of this within the body. It's um, having to recode and uh, re-geometrically reshape your entire energetic structure to hold this light. So I feel the Palladian starseeds already began going through this at the beginning of November. Um, for all other starseed lineages to follow suit, of course, Lyrans and Syrians always um, are the initiators but they're already advanced in their cellular structure. They already are holding 24 to 48 strands DNA. So when these gamma bursts hit Lyra and Syrian, it's not as intense, it's not as immense. It's not like, it's a full wipeout. Um, for the Palladian starseeds, um, they were experienced full wipeout um, through that 10 day particle conversion. So this is all generating from the Australia Australian area and from the Pacific Islands of the Ring of Fire, from the Mother Ark hubs and um, also the closing of the Uluru, Ayers Rock um, had kicked a lot of that off for many. So please see my November reading for the Pleiadians and um, I'll leave a link above for that. So this is a major Pleiadian planetary network agenda, which is a fifth density sun agenda from pre-universal records. When our sun was a binary star in the Pleiadian system, so we're receiving that encoding. Pleiadians are awakening first and bringing through the intelligences from fifth density through the Pleiadian holographic beam that links us through the photon belt to the metagalactic core at an accelerated rate of particle rotation and oscillation. So please see the Mayan interdimensional star map 
to see the Pleiadian holographic beam, but essentially how that works is it basically is just a beam that just shoots right through the core of everybody's structures. Lights it up straight from the metagalactic core and accelerates those particle rotations, amping up everything biologically and planetarily. So this is only set to increase um, as the sun gains more alignment to the great attractor. Um, and the space in the supercluster, um, the great attractor is the space in the supercluster. It's like this dark patch of magnetic energy. Nobody really knows what it is, um, but everything in the universe is basically being pulled towards it. We're attracted to it for some reason. So very intensely. And we're actually moving towards the great attractor. Um, I don't know the speed specifically, but you know, every so often we get closer and closer and closer and closer to this. So this is what though, this dynamic relationship is what is sending the impulses through these stellar cycles into the uh, center planetary Cathara pillar. And this is what's awakening the dormant portions in the planetary shields, stimulating the pre-Lemurian Holocaust encoding at pre-planetary tilt of 23 degrees. So ancient tilt may have been 33 or even 45 degree tilt, but it was definitely pre-cataclysm pole tilt, which differs from the pole tilt in present day. These dormant portions are most likely awakening from under the sea, just east of the Australia land by their only inner earth Q site. So it's these impulses are coming from this sector here. And over here. Um, and because it's generating from here and then shooting this energy through this ley line over for us to experience this, primarily, you know, South America is getting blasted with this. Um, it's really close to. According to my sources, this would be um, Lightning Ridge in Australia. And the ley lines extending out to run through Brisbane. So it's going to run through. This is Brisbane, and then this is like Sydney. So it's X marks the spot right at that Lightning Ridge. And then you have Brisbane and you have Sydney. Okay, so if you're having visions of lightning in your dreams right now, I, I had a dream of lightning the other night. This might be being invoked. Um, I've been seeing lightning strikes in my dreams, and I've also had some other friends confirm this as well. Now, all of this is important because shortly after the video I did on November 5th, okay, all of the fires broke out in Australia. So it's like I'm receiving the message of the ley line activation and then within a week it's cat it's catastrophic event catastrophic event um and that's what i mean by the the pattern recognition of the angular horizontal ley line tilt and why we should listen to these ley lines because they are the connections between the densities okay so they're they, they're bringing us a lot of information at this time um, so all of those fires broke out in Australia with way more intensity that had been brewing before. But one of my more significant observations also is most of these planetary fires are running on landmass between 15 to 25 degrees parallel Earth horizontal ley lines south of the equator. Okay, so this line right here, that goes all the way across. This is where the majority of the fires are breaking out. This is the this is the hot spot. Okay. All the way across. So okay, so for the next 3 weeks, Jupiter will be slowly working his way through his alignment with the metagalactic core. And I did pull this alignment from Brisbane, Australia. Okay, so this is according to that alignment that Jupiter is going to be uh, uh, 
supremely aligned to the metagalactic core and this is going to be some of the most highly affected area the sun will also be passing through the great attractor this could be the alignment that exacerbates the chain reaction events the unexpected to present suddenly okay so my sources and my connections in australia tell me that spiritual energy in australia is hyper activated right now they are experiencing symptoms of scattered DNA cellular repair, okay? They're not sleeping well, and they can't hold REM long enough to repair DNA. So they're having spurts of hyperactivation where they are all suddenly receiving so many downloads at once that it's hard for them to make sense of everything that's coming in right now. And they just have this overwhelming feeling like something is going to happen. Also, there's some friends on the Samoan Islands, okay? And the Samoan Island elder council members have had prophetic vision that they are preparing for volcanic activity. They have said that their elders have prophesied these events. Um, so if you don't know, Samoan Islands are sitting on two active island volcanoes that would actually fall in between the uh, intersection point of the inner earth Q site underneath um, the Pacific. Okay, so this entire area. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of maps here really quick. If a volcano would erupt, it's most likely to do so within this region, according to what the ley lines have been showing us in pattern recognition with the fires in this specific region on the planet. So I'm going to show you just some pictures of the Samoan Islands here and where they are in relativity to Australia and the Ring of Fire. Now, when these predictions are made or when we're making these connections, these cataclysmic connections, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to unfold. Um, a lot of us, a lot of us are living in probability timelines because we are receiving so much planetarily that they just become electrically stimulated cognitive impulses of reality trigger events that could probably play out, but it doesn't mean that they are going to play out. Um, so just keep that in mind too. Now, could it be that the Stargate planetary activations on the horizontal ley lines have just been sending distress signals and that the fires are just, you know, signals to possible greater events to come? Could this have a chain reaction trigger event that sent off a cataclysmic volcanic activity in the Pacific Ocean? I mean, if you look at the ring of fire and you look at its flow of volcanic activity, you can see that it comes up the Kermatic Tonga Trench, the Philippine Plate, the Aleutian Trench, the Juan de Fuca Plate, the Nazca Plate. Okay, those are the Nazca lines. You know, could this send off a trigger chain or event that just activated volcano after volcano after volcano? That would be really interesting. So, you know, we'll all be staying tuned to watch the grids. If you're a grid and gatekeeper that has these Master Templar mechanics, if you've been studying the biospiritual healing textbooks, if you've been studying bioregenesis, um, things that you can do to help planetary healing, um, you would want to run the Maharic Quick Seal and the Tribal Q Zone activation to the Inner Earth Q site in Australia. Okay, so as far as grid keeping, gatekeeping, this would be the X marks the spot um, to send that healing energy into the Ring of Fire into the intersecting point in Australia where we are receiving these messages clear over here on this side of the planet. So if you're doing grid work from North America, you know, maybe send that energy into the Mexican inner earth Q site that would get the energy over to this part of the planet. And the tribal Q zone activation 
would be a 12 tribal toning that sends healing to the planetary grids. So if you want any of this information, you can find this on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash indigo angel. Um, and I give all of these techniques to do the planetary grid work. Okay. And all of this is in accordance in alignment to, <clears throat> to the planetary grids. So namaste galactic family, stay positive. We just need to send good vibes. A lot of time, like I said, we receive catastrophic events. And this is one thing that I do notice in a lot of my friends and people that are communicating with me regularly is that um, we receive these impulses of probable greater catastrophic events. Um, but universal energy has this way of shifting things for the greater good of everybody involved. So we might be able to, you know, uh, remote view into the probabilities, but you know, whatever is in the best interest of planet and human planetary and humanity, that will be the outcome of prophetized events. Okay. So this is the hand that God plays overall is for the highest outcome for all living designs ultimately. So if volcanoes are meant to happen, um, there's usually a reason for that. And that is usually to regenerate the planetary energy in a way that's going to be in the best interest for everybody. So um, I just want to say namaste. I love you guys so much. And check out the next video I'm about to put out because I'm going to go into some galactic perceptions as far as what um, this ultimately could mean as far as new anchored in galactic perceptions into the planet. I, I do feel that this is actually opening a portal to new galactic structures. Um, so it might not necessarily be catastrophic. It might actually be um, just an opening that's going to actually connect us more uh, universally as well. Okay, guys, so namaste. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this energy update. I will be back with another video.